Robert, yo, can you believe it? Somebody called Starfire a mean name and made her sad. This is terrible. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Directs here. When it comes to Starfire, there are two specific episodes that you intellectuals have been requesting for me to take a look at. The first is the one where she goes through Temeranian puberty, and the second is the one where she's racially discriminated against. Hmm, so I could choose a light-hearted comedy-focused episode where I have very little chance of offending anyone since there's no controversial topic in it. Or... The episode starts with an alien dogfight that makes its way to Earth. You dirty low critch are gonna have to do better than that if you wanna stop me. <gasps> Captain Adam is back from his space mission. Wait, he's super ripped. Either that's not Captain Adam or Ed McGinnis got his hands on him again. The dogfight makes its way to the front of Titan's tower, catching the attention of our heroes. The Titans, of course, jump into action to help. Whoever he is, the guy's a good pilot. Uh, I said the Titans, of course, jump into action to help. Did he just take down that ship with his bare hands? Guys, why aren't you jumping into action to help? You're the Teen Titans. Your whole shtick is that you go. Come on, man, you can do it. Yes, and Starfire and Raven could both be helping him right now. Is he... Alive? Well, he might be. No thanks to you lot. All right, obviously I'm trying to make a point. The Titans are acting very out of character right now, and it's mainly because of the theme of the episode. What's to come will hit harder if the team starts the episode in awe of the mysterious stranger, and that only works if their personalities have more psychic oomph in them than usual. Thus, they are inclined to sit back and watch instead of what they normally do, which is act. One thing to take notice here is that the mysterious stranger is being a very stereotypical superhero. He's beating the bad guys, saying one-liners, not very good ones I'll admit, and even makes an effort to steer the destruction away from civilian casualties. Honestly, it feels way too good to be true. When I originally saw this as a kid, I thought this dude was gonna pull a black fire and actually be a villain. The episode does have a twist, but not exactly that. After the fight, the Titans go to introduce themselves. That was some amazing flying. Thanks, Valior of Vernathia. DC apparently taking inspiration from Captain Marvel again. Um, actually, Shady, DC's Captain Marvel was originally created by Wiz Comics, not DC, and he debuted way before Captain Marvel. Uh huh. Regardless, Valior is awkward, so I'm just gonna call him Val. You do that every day? No, most days I fight more than just two of them. So today's a slow day for you? Don't explain the joke, Raven. This show is known for emulating anime tropes, and one that gets used a lot in this episode is the team suddenly going chibi, trying to showcase how childish the Titans become around Val. Eventually, Starfire gets noticed by the alien hero, though he doesn't pay her much attention. So who were those guys? They weren't guys at all. Uh, girls? The Locrix are vicious fighting machines. Ah, so girl bosses. Oh wait, you meant literal machines. Val informs the Titans that the two ships he fought were scouts of the Locrix army, whose goal is to take over the galaxy and destroy all organic life. Wait a minute. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Um, actually, Shady, the hybrid aren't machines. They're just higher forms of life that don't evolve. You're not gonna let me tell any jokes today, are you? Val announces he plans to destroy the Locrix for good by going to their home planet Sentia and plugging in a device that will shut them down. The Titans volunteer their services, and just like that, Val has five new sidekicks. On their way to Sentia, Val continues to dazzle the Titans. Crixies to the left of me, Crixies to the right. Things weren't looking good for Val, your... What did you do? Jeez, I just got Teen Titans Go flashbacks. Wait, Go came after this, so would that technically be a premonition? Dude, those Crixies didn't know it was coming. Ah, it's weird to see the Titans hero worshiping. I mean, I could buy Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Starfire, but Robin and Raven just feel out of place here. Val lets four of the Titans man his ship, leaving one particular member out of the fun. But before things can get awkward, the ship gets attacked. Val orders Cyborg to keep flying and three of the other Titans to help him fight, once again leaving Starfire out of his plans. Ah. Ah, nice shot! Thanks. Nice work, son. <laughs> Remind me to stay on your good side. Watch it! Are you trying to blow up the ship? I will be more careful next time. After the fight, Starfire attempts to apologize to Val for what happened, but it's here she gets a nasty surprise. I was only trying to help. I don't need any help from a stupid truck. <gasps> hey! You can't say that! 
This is a kid's show. Later in the briefing room, Val lays out the plan for the upcoming attack on Sentient. Starfire, feeling uncomfortable, keeps her distance. Robin and Cyborg, I'll want you both providing cover as I bring out the Quantum Eradicator. I'll take it here to the central power core. Now, Sunshine, I'm gonna need you to keep that energy field of yours around the ship. And Champ? You provide backup where needed. You'll notice during the briefing that Val gives everyone nicknames, so nobody notices when he gives one to Starfire as well. You're getting all this, Traki? Yes, I have gotten everything you have said. I'm glad we have an understanding. Get it? It's a double entendre. She heard the briefing, but also understood she was being insulted. The ship gives a warning to everyone that the planet they're approaching is surrounded by a minefield. This causes Val to finally give Starfire a task. This is a job for you, Traki. Get out there and move those mines. Val Yor, you are such a brave warrior. Are you sure you do not wish to move these devices yourself? Nice diction, Starfire. Of course I could move them, but I'm needed inside. Besides, your people can withstand the hostile conditions of space. Wow, he actually used the your people line. We getting all the stereotypes today. Cyborg and Robin are concerned about Starfire's safety, once again putting the emphasis that these people are friends in practice, not just in label. Let's get going. We haven't got all day, Truck. Truck? What does that mean? It means nothing. So Starfire, hoping to prove her usefulness, proceeds to move the mines with Val nagging in her ear. Nice and easy. We don't want any mistakes this time. I will not make any. She has a few close calls, even accidentally detonating one of the mines, but she manages to get the job done. Cyborg, happy for his teammate, goes to congratulate her. Way to go, Traki! <gasps> you do not call me that. That is our word. I thought you said it didn't mean anything. No. I said it means nothing. When Valior calls me truck, he is saying that I am worthless. Okay, I gotta give props to whoever wrote that. Taking Starfire's unique way of speaking and using it to phrase a sentence like that is such a great way of misleading Cyborg, as well as the audience. Listen to the dialogue from before. Truck? What does that mean? It means nothing. Obviously, we the audience know it means something, so at the time we would just assume Starfire is lying, but no, she's telling the truth. In fact, you hear that tone? She's telling a painful truth. Hinden Walsh, Starfire's voice actress, makes her voice perfectly ambiguous. So he's calling you a terrible name. You know what it feels like to be judged simply because of how you look? Of course I do. I'm part robot. <laughs> You know what you did, episode. Starfire wants to hold off on telling the others about what Val is doing, presumably so they can concentrate on the mission, but Cyborg insists Robin should know now. Both characters have good intentions, but I agree with Cyborg here. Not only is Robin the type of leader who cares about his team, especially Starfire, but as the leader, he should be kept up to date of their emotional state. You remind me of myself when I was your age, Spike. Oh. <laughs> Hey, that mentor affection is for Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne alone. So Cyborg and Starfire come in and let Robin know what's going on. Starfire, why didn't you say something? He will apologize. Our mission is more important than my feelings. So I both do and don't appreciate... Wait, Starfire, what did you just say? Our mission is more important than my feelings. Uh, so I both do and don't appreciate the fact that Robin instantly believes his friends. Not to harp on this, but they are his friends. He has no reason to doubt their words over some guy he just met. Too often shows like to suddenly forget that characters trust each other all for the sake of the plot, especially when some new guy comes into play. I'm looking at you, King of the Hill. However, this does beg the question, did thou not realize that Starfire would eventually tell someone what that nickname meant? He was clearly trying to keep his feelings about Star hidden, which in insinuates he knew there would be consequences if someone found out, yet he openly calls the girl a slur. She was bound to tell her friends. But anyway, I need to talk about that line Starfire just said. Our mission is more important than my feelings. From that one line alone, I just gained so much respect for Starfire. I mean, it's not even a particularly extraordinary line, but when was the last time you heard a character say anything was more important than their feelings? You guys know, you absolutely know, if this episode was made today, this is how it would play out. I was only trying to help. I don't need any help from a stupid truck. Nope, 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 stop talking, go to jail. 
It feels so good to see a media acknowledge that even if you're justifiably upset, some things are more important than your feelings. The ship finally reaches Sentient, and as it touches down, Val goes over the plan once more, but this time Robin questions Starfire's absence in it. What about Starfire? Ugh, guard the ship truck. No, I am going with you. I gave you an order. I do not take orders from you. Besides, my people can withstand hostile conditions. <laughs> nice turnaround, Star. I think this is the real reason why the writers decided to have Robin know what was happening ahead of time. Robin is the person whom Starfire takes orders from. If he wasn't aware of the background situation, he would have told Starfire to obey Val. But since he knows what's really going on, there's no way that's happening and the plot can proceed like the writers want. The team lands and of course we get our usual superhero shenanigans. Lots of cool fighting, powers flying around. Raven, what are you doing? Your job was to put a shield around the ship. Starfire and Val make their way to their target, with Val berating Starfire and denying her help throughout their journey. Move it, truck! You're just getting in the way! I can handle it! I can help! I said I can handle it! Despite Val's reluctance and insistence on her not being needed, Starfire clearly makes his trip a lot easier. They get the device into the central power core, and Val says probably his worst line yet. Now, I'm going to get out of here before she blows, but you're welcome to stay. Bigot detected. Activating convenient anti-jerk shield. Ah! Val's only hope out of this situation is Starfire, but like before, he denies her help simply because of what she is. Take my hand! Ah, keep your filthy hands off me, truck! Starfire, however, refuses to let Val define her, even in this manner. You may not value my life, but I still value yours! <laughs> And now, an open letter to Marvel and DC. Dear faces of the comic industry, what the crap happened? This used to be the standard for superheroes. You know, taking the high road, inspiring us regular people to be our best selves. I get that not every character needs to be a saint, but I should not feel like this type of hero is going extinct. Starfire succeeds in rescuing Val from both the force field and the following explosion. And what are her first words after she lands? Val Yor requires medical attention. Even now, still putting what matters first. Later on Earth, Val's been patched up and all the Titans have been informed of his attitude towards Starfire. They are of course upset at him and Val is forced to humble himself before his savior. I have to admit you're not bad for a tr Tamaranian. You must be one of the good ones. No. I'm trying to pay you a compliment. Then why does it still sound like an insult? Probably because he is complimenting her, but still insulting Tamaranians. The irony though is that Raven, the half-demon, would say this. When it comes to her race, she literally is one of the good ones. Spike, you understand. I didn't mean anything by it, it's just- Valior, I think it's time for you to go. Oof. Okay, so here's where I have an opinion that might upset some people. I don't like how the Titans treat Val at the end here. Don't get me wrong, I'm in no way defending Val. His actions throughout the episode and his comments, even here at the end, are absolutely wrong. But the Titans aren't exactly making things better. This episode started with Val refusing to acknowledge Starfire as an asset because of what she is. Starfire proved herself otherwise and forced Val to admit she has value. Through her actions, she opened a door in Val's mind that was previously closed, that she was not worthless. But changing a person's worldview is often not an easy thing to do. So while Val has to admit Starfire has quality to her, he believes it's because she overcame her racial tendencies that made her mediocre to begin with. Personally, I think there is a way the Titans could have worded their disapproval to acknowledge that while Val is still not worth being friends with, he has at least made some progress. Instead, they act like his efforts to change are fruitless and that he is a lost cause. This results in Val digging deeper into his prejudice and simply lumping the humans with Tamaranians. You don't get rid of ideas by outcasting them. They just go to a different place. Now, I'm not saying the Titans did anything wrong. It's not their responsibility on how Val views the world. I'm just saying they missed an opportunity to do something right and take the high road like Starfire has been been doing throughout the episode. We end with a monologue from Starfire herself. There will always be people who say mean words because you are different, but there are many more people who do not judge others based on how they look. Those are the people whose words truly matter.
gee, remember when saying something like that wasn't controversial? Can we play this on a loudspeaker for all of Western civilization, please? And that was the episode. It's so much better than I remember, though admittedly it's not perfect. The Titans act way more childishly than they should to make the theme better, and there was that missed opportunity at the end, but I think I might just have a new favorite Starfire episode. Now, I'm a black man on the internet, which means people love to hear me talk about prejudice, so let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. Does this episode handle the subject matter of rockism well? Well, technically it's speciesism, but for what it is? Yes. Emphasis on for what it is. Val expressly treats Starfire as an inferior based on what she is rather than who she is. He calls her a slur specifically because he wants her to feel inferior. And he himself is a hero, not a villain. All of these elements are important as they help make clear what wrong deed is happening here. That being said, I'm going to be nicer to a Teen Titans episode about prejudice more than I would other shows. If this was an episode of, say, Bojack Horseman or Avatar The Last Airbender, then I would have different expectations. Those shows pride themselves on perspective, having a conversation, and explaining why something is bad rather than just saying that it is. With them, I would be asking questions like, what is Val's history, if any, with Tamaranians? Has he ever met one, or is his opinion just hearsay? Is there any reason other than rumor that he would hate them? In a more complex complex show, answers to these questions are needed to fully explore this topic. That being said, Teen Titans isn't a more complex show. All I need to understand in this context is that what Val did was wrong. Of course, with simpler shows, that means if I disagree with the episode's message, it isn't really going to change my mind. Don't worry, I agree with this episode's message. The main thing I really want to get into, however, isn't the prejudice itself, but rather Starfire's reaction to it. Maybe it's because of the times we're living in, but I am absolutely in love with the fact that throughout the episode, Starfire puts the mission first. Even when she's being defiant to Val, it's not because of pride. I mean, yes, her pride is showing, but this happens because Val lets his prejudice lead to a bad tactical decision. Starfire is the strongest, fastest, and toughest Titan. She's also the most experienced with war and combat, especially on a hostile foreign planet. She should absolutely be on the front line in this situation, or at the very least, not on the ship doing nothing. And that moment at the end when she saves Val after he literally just told her he didn't care if she died, it's been a while since i felt that inspired. The internet is full of people yelling about how someone who disagrees with them deserves harsh punishments, including death. So hearing Starfire yell, You may not value my life, but I still value yours, ignited something in me. It makes me want to be a better person, which is what superheroes should do. The point is, Starfire never lets Val's ill-informed negative opinion of her compromise how she addresses the situation. Be that punching him in the face, sitting on her hands while her friends do all the work, or even leaving him to die. All in all, a great episode that explains how to properly handle being mistreated by others. Woo, we reached the end of the video and I went the entire time without actually saying the word truck. Now no one can cancel me in seven years when it eventually becomes an actual slur. Crap. This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. Heavy the same. Goodbye.